Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this extra 115 volt portable water pump and I'm going to tell you why I picked this up. You know, for me it's always been about prepping smarter and not harder. And um, one of the reasons, well the main reason I picked this up is because I want to be able to rotate my 55 gallon drums of water that I have stored a whole lot easier. I'm telling you right now I was kind of putting off doing the last two because um, it's just such a pain in the neck. You know, having to do it and drain it and use the hand pump. I do have a hand pump and it's one of those old fashioned ones you'd see in survival prepper stores. You know, it goes all the way down the barrel and you push down on this and it pumps the water out. But you got to keep pumping even once you get a flow going, you still have to keep pumping a little bit. So this is going to make life a lot easier. That's one of the reasons I picked it up. You may have different reasons for doing this. I don't believe this would work as a well pump at all. This is a short-term, kind of quick, you know, easy, small pump. This also has other applications. You can use this to drain water heaters when you need water in an emergency. You can use this to drain water beds, same reason. Washing machines that don't that stop working. Uh, filling radiant heating systems. There's a ton of things you can do with this that are really, really cool and save you time. And will save you some money, too. These things are not expensive. This is $55.98, so $56. Bucks. So all in all, it's a very handy little system, and uh, we are going to spend some time outside with it today. So I'm just going to give you a quick look at what I got, and then we're going to go out, and we're going to rotate those two barrels. Now, I have another hose out there set up to drain from the drain end of things. Um, we have, with this particular kit, you're going to get some extra parts. Don't be confused by these. You get two impellers, okay? You're going to get a replacement gasket for when you replace the impeller. And in here, you're going to see these things here. These are brushes for the motor. When you run these things a very long time, eventually the brushes will wear down on the commutator, and you're going to need new ones. So they give you two extras. That's really cool. Of them. I thought it was kind of neat to give you a little bit of extra maintenance stuff. The brushes will come out here. And on the other side, it's on the bottom, down here. And uh, from racing little electric slot cars in my youth, I know a whole lot about motors and commutators and brushes. Anyway, you are going to need to fill this with water the first time you use it. They say it's self-priming up to 7 feet in depth. I'm still not going to rush it. I'm not going to risk it. Um, I'm just going to fill this end with water. See how they have the warning all over it. We're just going to pour a little water in there and make sure it's all full. So when we connect this, it's not drawing on air. Um, I, it, it says right there, self-priming up to 7 feet depth, but uh, I'm going to be safe. This is an attachment for this hose here that will filter out pools and stuff. Neat little thing to have, handy. Um, this will keep from getting a lot of the heavier sediment in there. This is for clean water only, by the way. This has no filter in it. So if you're thinking of pumping out like, you know, a muddy, so slimy, dirty puddle somewhere. That probably isn't what you want to do with it. And that's why I bought this, because I'm only pumping clean water out. The most I did notice in one of my barrels at the bottom, because we have very calcium-rich water, there were a couple of white flakes on the bottom. I'm not worried about that, because that stuff just breaks up. But uh, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend doing this with, you know, pebbles and lots of mud and dirt and stuff like that. This will be your hose, and this will go down. This is the part that's going to connect over here and go down into the barrel to suck the water up. So, enough talking. It does not have an on and off switch, by the way. Just want to let you know that. You've got to plug it in and unplug it when you're done. And you don't want to let this thing run dry. So once I get to the, you know, maybe that much water left in the barrel, I'm just going to take the barrel out, roll it around, dump it out, pour a little bleach in there, tiny little bit, and uh, rinse it out, and then refill it with water. So let's get this outside. Enough talking for today, and let's give it a try and uh, see if we can get it working. All right, really quickly, these are my four barrels that I keep out here. I have another four inside the garage. Um, two of them are 30 gallon barrels and two of them are 55. Uh, these are the two here that I have not rotated in probably four years. Now, I did test the water by the way. Uh, water's perfectly fine, tastes fine, nothing wrong with it. Uh, like I said on the bottom of the, the bottom of the barrels there, there were some flakes of calcium. You know, we have very calcium rich water here. Um, so that just happens, but not any large amount or anything. As you can see, I have the pump there and the draining tube. There's the hose that I'm going to use to drain it out of the out of the room here. Um, it's going to go out this way. Let me turn you around a little bit on the floor here and out those double doors to my backyard. Hopefully it will not flow back in, <laughs> but uh, 
it's not a lot. It's 55 gallons. Um, we had a really bad rainstorm here a couple months ago, and uh, the water just, because the, the backyard is kind of slanted this way, the water just came in here, and I was brushing it out, trying to get it out. Anyway, um, we're going to set that up. I am going to show you how to prime the pump, but we're going to set up the hose going out the door and all that first, and bring you back, and we'll prime the pump and see how well this thing really works. All right, so you're, you're going along with me on this one. I've never primed a pump or used one of these before in my life. So I'm going to do what the instructions say to do. And I have a little pitcher here. We're going to fill this side with water because that's where that sticker is. You see that sticker over there. And that really is all there is? Hmm. It just seemed like there should be more water, but okay. With such warnings, you would think they'd want you to really uh, <laughs> fill it up a whole lot more. You know, there'd be more volume in there to fill up. All right, so we're going to put this tube down here. I believe that's that in there. Try to be careful here not to knock everything over. And put this on here. I did hear some of the water rushing up into it. Get on there. Then I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to see just how well this works. Oops, I'll kink the... Kink it. Ah, you know what? Let's just leave it on its side. <laughs> I want to kink it. How about that? Yeah, there we go. That's good. This, um, sorry about moving the camera. This hose is kind of the one I'm using to drain. It's kind of a junk hose that I have left over. So I'm going to plug this in to start it up and uh, bring you back when it's running and we'll see how well this thing actually works. Okay, the pump is kind of loud. So we're going to move you outside and show you that it's working. I did have to replace my uh, thing up there. There you go. I'll tell you in a second what happened. And the water is draining, so this is working. Yeah, the pump's a little loud, but eh, we'll live. So I'm going to let this drain out, and we are going to uh, move on to the next barrel after that, and I'll show you how that works. It did require a new uh, hose on the other end, because believe it or not, I dropped the hose they sent me into the barrel. So I'm going to have to fish that out when it's, once it's drained. <laughs> but... Uh, Working really well so far, working good. Even with that crummy kinked hose that I use, I had to unkink it a little bit, but it is pumping out water now. Bring you back in a few minutes. I just wanted to show you, it's kind of moving on me there. I just wanted to show you the strength of that pump. It is really pumping out that water well. Um, it's doing nicely, so. Pleased with it so far. It is noisy, but you know what? This is gonna make this job so much quicker that who cares about the noise? <laughs> All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, so I have about maybe that much water left at the bottom. That's enough to move it. I want to keep that water in there to kind of swish things around and dump it out, get out the little bit of uh, sediment that was in the bottom. But it did really good, and I want to check it out and see. It's only slightly warm. Caused no problems at all. I had a little bit of problem in the start, um, mainly because I dropped the required hose that came with it in there. But I also was trying to um, get it to prime. And even though I primed it here, I find that pushing this down in here a little bit and shoving the water into the tube got it started no problem at all. So I'm going to clean this up, and we're going to try that one. And that one I'm actually going to time and see how long it takes, because I didn't time this one. I just wanted to make sure it worked. We're going to time the one on the other side and see how long it takes, because I would, I would estimate maybe 10 minutes, but I may be way off. So let's get this thing cleaned up, and I'll bring you back, and uh, then we'll uh, empty that all one. All right, so that barrel is all cleaned. And I cleaned it out, rinsed it out, put some bleach in it. I usually use about, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of bleach or an eighth cup of bleach in, in a 55-gallon drum. Um, and that came out when I tasted it, you know, after all these years. That came out fine, so there wasn't any bleach taste to it at all. So now we got this one set up. That's all ready to go. And we're going to plug it in and uh, let that drain. And what I'm going to do is start a timer when I plug it in. So we're going to see how long it takes to empty a 55-gallon drum. I did fish out the uh, hose that was at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it in the corner there. Hang on. Let me grab it for you. So that's something to think about. <laughs> don't, don't let the hose sit down there while you're priming the pump. But uh, I'm going to keep this one on because it's already primed and already ready. So I'm going to plug it in, start the timer, and back. All right. It's running. Ten seconds. And the water is flowing outside show you that in a second and we'll have this one done I want to see the exact time because I'm just estimating that it was 10 minutes let's take you outside let you see the flow of the water all right we've got a nice flow going and one of the things that's nice about being out here in the desert is this will all evaporate within an hour or two 
already the big flood I had out here from the other ones almost gone. See, it's got a decent flow to it. We're about, what, almost a minute in. Can you see that? Yeah, about a minute in, got a decent flow to it. What I like to do is once it gets down to that little bit of water at the bottom, I roll it. You don't want to pull these things because they're plastic on the bottom and eventually they'll wear through. I roll it outside, shake it up as best I can, dump out the rest of whatever's the sediment or whatever's left in there, then spray it out with a hose once and for all, dump it again, and then put my bleach in, let it sit, and fill it up with water. So we are going to fill these back up, probably not on video because that would be kind of boring, <laughs> but uh, once this is done, I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so there you go. Let me show you what we got here. Uh, come on, turn. There we go. 11 minutes, 17 seconds, because that was a pretty good estimate on there. There is maybe that much water at the bottom. Again, that's successful to me. I'm going to take that and roll it out now. Honestly, you know, I roll it on its side. I don't roll it on, I don't roll it like a barrel. I roll it kind of on its side like this. More like, like, like this, you know, on its side, tip it up, kind of turn it. I don't want to, uh, drag it because the bottom is plastic and eventually that will wear it out. There is a lot of sediment on the bottom of this one. Um, this is probably my oldest barrel. I would estimate probably hasn't been rotated in about six years. The sediment on the bottom again is, um, just, uh, what is it, calcium buildup, like little white flakes. So I'm going to spray that out, but pretty much, well, this has been a successful test. It's been empty two of these in, you know, 11 minutes each, 12 minutes each. Uh, you really can't beat that. Considering my hand pump used to take me anywhere from an hour to two hours to pump them empty, and then, you know, having to deal with cleaning them up. So definitely... Uh, not a bad deal. And this is how I do them. I do them two at a time. So probably in a year, I'll do those on the end that way. The other two, you can see them this way. And, uh, heck, I've been real happy with it. So that is the deal on this guy. Um, I'll give you some final information on it. In the package, you'll get the utility pump, the six-foot hose that I dropped in there but got out, the uh, plastic suction strainer, which we saw outside. You got an extra set of brushes and one impeller and an English user manual, which is actually pretty helpful. Um, it's 5.79 pounds. Product dimensions are about 8.9 inches by 7.5 inches by 9 inches all the way front and back. So it's very compact, easy to carry, and I will have a link down below. Like I said, they run about 56 bucks, and the time savings is immeasurable. They do about 5.5 gallons per minute, so that's pretty darn good for, uh, you know, with a crummy hose. You see that little green hose that I'm using as an exit hose? It's kind of kinked, and it's a small hose. I'm not complaining. You know, that's going to save me a ton of time. And time is money, especially when you're preparing. If you do have these and you do have a manual pump, this is so much easier. Anyway, folks, I'll put a link down below where you can pick one up. I thank you guys for watching. Uh, and don't forget to check all our other links down below. We have our freeze dry wholesalers link. And now is the time to get stocked up before panic begins. Using my link, you will save 15%. Just click that link and shop. And he's got a ton of stuff there. The range and the variety of stuff he has is absolutely amazing. For everything from freeze-dried cheesecake to freeze-dried filet mignon. We have our Thrive Life link down below. Don't forget to check that out, too, if you're interested in Thrive Food. We have our My Patriot Supply link down there, which is preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com, and our Amazon store, which you can also pick that up in. And uh, we have everything that we try to review on the channel in that one, and unless it comes from somewhere else. Anyway, that's the video, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay safe and stay prepared.